just sing for this guy. He's written a little musical. We're about to do backers auditions, and one of the girls dropped out. And I said, okay. And so I went and I sang, and I got in, and, and oh, the, the, a, a, a person who attended that production um, had just graduated from the same college, SUNY Oswego, State University of New York in Oswego, New York, and uh, eight years ahead of me. And she comes to me after the play, and she says, I want to do shoot, introduce you to my agents. I go to meet her agents, Lester and Juliette Lewis, never had children, both gray-haired. He, he smoked cigars and pipes, and she smoked Paul Malls. Oh my God, that was back in the day when you could smoke in offices and stuff. Um, little, 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 little Juliet and Lester Lewis. And they took me on immediately. And I'm not kidding, within weeks I had my first commercial for Oil of Olay. I'm all of 23 years old and I'm on camera talking about younger looking skin. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and that was like, I mean it just was like, what? How does that happen that you just get a national commercial? Uh, and I had to be taft hartley into the union. I wasn't a member of Screen Actors Guild, so, so they paid the penalty and I joined the union. Um, and within another year, I got a, an equity job, which to me was far more thrilling, because I had come from musical theater. That's what I did all through college. I played the great wenches of musical theater, uh, Aldunza and Manifel Mancha and, and, and Nancy and Oliver. Uh, and uh, uh, so, uh, sorry, that conversation was distracting me. Um, where was I going? Oh, well, we'll just, well, just my, my sort of sad resume. But, but, but I got, I got an agent, and now I'm auditioning. And, and it was that agent that encouraged me to meet a manager out in California. He came into town. He had been a child actor. His name is Michael Mann, and they introduced me to him because I, I was getting the, the rare uh, audition for a pilot uh, uh, in New York City. Most of that casting happened in L.A. And I was getting close, but no cigar. And this was happening maybe once every six months. I started to do commercials fairly regularly. Uh, uh, uh. Anyway, I met this man and he said, I want you to come out to LA. I, want, I, I, think, I think we can do something together. And I'm like, okay. I said, I'll give it six months because I really didn't want to leave New York. I'm an upstate New York girl. And I didn't want to leave the Northeast. I really, California didn't hold any allure for me. It's not where I wanted to live. I'm, I'm serious about that. People say, why did you ever leave California? I'm like, well, why wouldn't I? Um, uh, uh, and it had nothing to do with the politics of the state or anything like that. It's just a sunny day every day. You have no idea how tedious that is until you're in it every dang day. Like, I love weather. I love the changing of the seasons. I love rain. I love the, uh, you know, the clouds in the sky and breezes. And Anyway, I just, I just missed all of that once I left. So I said, I'll give it six months. That's all I'm going to give it. And this, I was 25. And, and wouldn't you know, in the sixth month, I got a little job with John Ritter in a movie called In Love with an Older Woman. And I, I, I did that job, and I went, ah, oh, dag nabbit, now i got to stay. Because I told him if I got a job, I'd stay. And I think I did Knight Rider later that summer. But I had already met Elsa Bergeron at Paramount in the first couple of months I was there. And she remembered me a good two years later for, 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 Star Trek III, The Search for Spock, I, I went in to, to see her and Stuart Jensen. Elsa Bergeron, by the way, was not then and is still married to Michael Gross, who played the father on Family Ties. And she was a lovely lady. And uh, I went in to see them, and, and I didn't know what the part was. And I remember saying, well, you know, if I was going to be in Star Trek, I'd want to play an alien. And that was because just a few, just a week or two earlier, I had been called in for a Dino De Laurentiis movie uh, about King Kong. It was one of the King Kong remakes, and and uh, uh, I think Linda Hamilton ultimately got the part. But I but I was being called back to play her part, um, uh, and and King Kong in the film. One of them is getting a transplant. It's either Lady Kong or King Kong, and they've got the apes laid up in a big gymnasium, and just the thought of it, I read the script and I said to my agent, I can't go. I cannot go to this audition because I cannot take this seriously. I, I, it's just the goofiest thing. I, a heart transplant, oh my God. It, you know, about, you know, in a huge ape. I said, I can't do it. I, I know I'm supposed to be an actress, but there's just some things you can't do. So, so uh, I remember that that's why I made the comment, the offhanded comment I made to, to Elsa and Stuart. Well, if it was going to be, you know, I'd rather play an alien. And lo and behold, two days later, I go to meet I go to meet Leonard Nimoy, and it is an alien, the Vulcan character, 
and I have a very, very unusual guys that you would ever have a one-on-one -on -one with an A director ever in Hollywood. Normally, you audition for the casting person first. Then maybe you get a call back and there's somebody else with some power in the room. Then you get a third call back, some more powers in the room, and then the fourth call, whatever. I mean, you, you, you have to keep recreating whatever magic you created in the first place. I meet him once. We have a lovely conversation. He's actually kind and generous about my sad credits, my little upstate New York theater credits. <laughs> and you did this in a gunk with Maine. Oh, how lovely. And you did this, you did this in the Finger Lakes region. I'm like, yes, I did. <laughs> anyway, we just, he was just so nice and wonderful and, and real. You know, he's a real person. And he said to me, Let, I want you to go out and I want you to read some sides. And that's when I first saw the, what the character was and the scenes, you know, sides or scenes from, from, from the project. And uh, uh, he said, I want you to think about Vulcans having 1,000 years of wisdom behind the eyes. And I'm like, oh my god, that's a tall order. <laughs> 1,000 years of wisdom, huh? Okay, so anyway, so I tried to get my, you know, my serious Vulcan cap on, and, and um, I look at the lines. It's the scenes between Savick and David early on in the movie. And I go back in, and I read them with him. Yes. And he's taping everything. He asked me, do you mind if I videotape our, our interview? And I said, no, not at all. And what he did was he saved me from having to go back and, 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 and do that process I was just describing to you, where you go back and you have to do it, you know, hopefully recreate. Listen, if you get called back for something, you know something you did in the original interview hit home. But you're not sure what. But you're not exactly, <laughs> you're not sure what. And now you just hope to God you don't screw it up. And that you perhaps recreate the same the same scene work and audition and moments that you did in the fir the first time, but it's a crapshoot. It's a total crapshoot. You're a different person. It's a different day. Holy cow! But I didn't have to do any of that. The, the, the next time I think I went over to Paramount, I, I, it was to, it was to just say hello to Harv Bennett. I literally knocked on his door. I got a pass to go on the lot and all, and I found his building and found his office. Hi, Mr. Bennett. It's Rob Curtin. No. And we just stood at the doorway and talked for a few moments, and and then th that was that. And, um, oh, the, at that point, now I'm going over to makeup. I'm going over to, to costumes, Western costumes. And, and, and then there was a screen test. And I was, told, I was told at the screen test that one young lady was a friend of Michelle's and it was a favor. And I'm not sure who the other human being was there. I don't remember the other two ladies that day, to be honest. I was just too focused and too nervous. But but I was kind of I kind of got the message wink wink if you don't screw it up today it's yours <laughs> so so I was on point and uh, we tried different wigs and then ultimately they decided to use my own curly hair uh, uh, I think they talked about doing green makeup which is interesting because they'd already established Savic with with a I guess a human complexion um, so we played around with makeup and hair a little bit that day, and then I did the screen test with, with David, Merritt, the actor who played David Merritt Buttrick, who was lovely, and I got the call the next day that I got the part. And it was, it, guys, one of the things I've, I've, um, you know, I've been asked is, you know, what, what was the thing that meant the most to you about Star Trek? And honestly, they're in close competition with each other. It's definitely the people I've met over the years and the friendships I've formed. That's been like awesome beyond compare. But really, I think what maybe edges that out just a little bit is that my dad was diagnosed with cancer. He was 53 years old in June of 1983, and I was cast in August of 1983. And Star Trek gave us something to hold on to, something positive off in the distance. This bright light, literally, you know, it was like a comet going across a dark, dark sky because um, my dad was a really big personality, a warm, loving, funny, funny man, and for him to be sick and not himself was just, just, just the most, you know, awful thing we could have imagined. And he did ultimately live long enough to see the film come out in June of 1984, and he left us, um, John, gosh, um, we're going to be celebrating an anniversary in just a few days. He died November 17th of 1984. Uh, he was only 54 years old. I've already outlived him 11 years, but, it, but you know, giving my family something to distract us from all that awfulness was so fabulous. And I had parents who were very supportive of a young lady going off into the world and trying to do something creative. And this was a lovely way of, of letting him know, at least on some level, I'll be okay. You know, like, Robin's gonna be okay in the world. And I, uh, and I was tickled pink that he lived long enough to see it. Uh, and I think he got the biggest charge out of it. 
as did my whole family. So, so, and I too, like you, Carol, I had an older brother, and you know, I, I immediately got a, I got got a telegram from my brother when I was cast. It was logical that, that you should be sad. You know? and, and, my, and my parents, who weren't that familiar with Star Trek, sent me a telegram that said, "May the Force be with you." <laughs> and I'm like, "Ah, oh, great sentiment, Mom, Dad, wrong franchise." <laughs> so, so yeah, so. Um, Star Trek has just been so winning, 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 winning. So how long in LA away. total? How many what? How, how long did you stay in LA? I was there 18 years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I had a good run, made great friends. I was just out there for the first time since the pandemic for about 10 days, a, a week and a half ago. Had a blast, had a blast. Just, again, great friends, the kind of friends that give organs to each other, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. I'm sorry, Doug. You've had your hand up for a minute. Yeah, yep. those of us who are not actors, will you explain what a screen test is? Oh, oh, well, it's it's kind of like being on a set like this or some facsimile of a set, and you and you and they want to see you on film in yeah. makeup, in hair, it was, uh, almost but... uh, under almost realistic settings, yes. uh, 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 or circumstances. So 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 they get to sort of test you and see how you do in what is almost a. a you know the exact same experience as as, as real life shooting. So I thought I kind of had a feeling, but what? But then again, it could have been anything. So sure. I thought I'd ask you the question that way you would explain to us what it actually is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Given given, given that, that that the character had you know extra makeup and and, yeah. and, and perhaps uh, you know costume so you challenges and so forth, and they they wanted to make sure yeah, that well, I could. You know, I when you say screen test, it kind of pictures in my mind. So well, maybe they just want to see what she looked like on screen. Yeah, Correct. Well, you That's know, pretty or, much or, it. like in a film, you know, yeah. and they yeah. just, they take that little video and then they develop it and they put it on the TV or or on a projector and Absolutely. say, okay, this is what she's going to look like. You know. Mm -hmm. Or, or, or if I say, oh, she don't look very good. On the right? <laughs> yeah. No. Th th they need to see that you can go the the final right. distance, I guess. Okay. And, and I'm just curious. Even take, even take direction. It isn't just sort of get, getting the look of the character right, but it's also can you? Mm -hmm. can That's something I always get right. curious about. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've seen screen tests uh, from from older days where people somebody's just in front of a screen mm -hmm. and they're going, hey, I'm so it's like the SNL. Auditions, this isn't it fun now, what's available on YouTube and the stuff you can look at. Uh, uh, and it's really fun to watch, like, you know, people who later became so, so uh, uh, popular and, and um, you know, do, do a screen, their first screen test for SNL or something like that. I know on YouTube they have one of Robin Williams doing a screen test for commercials, and there's like so many di different takes of the same yes. advertising, but right? he did like like 50 different takes because he did it differently each time. And I time. think I've seen his screen test for Mork. Possibly yeah. is that that's popular on YouTube too. Hey, I feel badly that so couple got up, so people might need to leave. Uh, uh, so I so have to you sign live on the state of New York. How I do. close are you to Medusa? I have no idea where we're just. <laughs> I'm, I'm 20 minutes southeast of Syracuse. Okay, so she's central. about 30 minutes south of Albany. There you go. So we're two hours apart. Oh, okay. Yeah, two, two and a half hours. In my mind. No, no, no. I just I feel badly that couple got up. Maybe they have to leave, so I, I should sign for them. I think it was the kid. Oh, oh. Um, no, it wasn't the kid. This couple here too. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know what I'm seeing. So does anybody need me to sign before they go? Pardon? Oh, yeah, I'm looking at pictures. Okay, good. Yeah, okay. we need to. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in my mind, 